ABNC, America's Black News Channel. Watch us on all major cable providers and major streaming platforms. Finally, news that speaks to us. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. And although Biggie Smalls' reign as the king of hip-hop was short-lived, his music is still alive and well. I could tell from the beginning that he was in his language, the way he spoke, his intellect. Kirk Burroughs co-founded Bad Boy Productions alongside Sean P. Diddy Combs. Biggie would eventually become the hip-hop label's biggest star. An exceptional artist, an exceptional person, you know, fun character. Before he became big, he was Christopher Wallace, a young kid, battle rapping on the streets of Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. 1994 was Biggie's premiere year, dropping his first album, Ready to Die. Songs like Juicy and One More Chance helped the album go platinum with millions sold. I worked hard, you know, and everybody showed me love and bought the record and it stayed on the charts for a long time and I appreciate it. Thank God. He was a master at his craft. He understood how to put words together so well. Ron Lawrence produced songs with Biggie. Lawrence was the creative mind behind Biggie's mega hit, Hypnotize. That was the first one that I knocked out of the park, so that was big for me because the phone started ringing. As Biggie's star ascended, he made sure to never forget his homies from Bed-Stuy. He wanted to be the biggest thing in the game. In 1995, Biggie formed the rap group Junior Mafia. All of the members were from Brooklyn, including Little C's. Outside of him growing up with him, and him being my friend and my brother, I just thought he was the dopest MC I heard. Biggie was lyrically gifted and metaphorically creative. His skill set was unmatched. But in 1997, Biggie's life would meet a tragic end in Los Angeles. A gunman drove up and opened fire, as Biggie said inside an SUV. 25 years later, Biggie's murder remains unsolved. His kids lost their father. His mother lost her son. You know, and, and me and my guys, we lost one of our best friends, you know, the one that took care of us and put us on and got us out these streets. On the day of his funeral, people lined the streets and gathered outside his home. Biggie pulled himself out of this neighborhood and he became as big as he wanted to be. 25 years later, the corner of Fulton and St. James is now Christopher Wallace Way. And to commemorate the anniversary of his death, artists painted murals of Biggie showing him as a graduate, a fashion icon, and as the king of hip hop. Here's an opportunity to uh, reflect on his life, his contribution to society and to music and to the arts and to Brooklyn and New York City. The legend is lost, but his music carries on. Long live the king. I'm Dre Clark for BNC.